For millennia, Native Americans have preserved oral traditions which speak of a time very long ago when their ancestors came into conflict with giants that roamed the region and interfered with several tribes across the continent. A great many of these stories involve a race of white giants that were eventually wiped out. With few exceptions, the giants of the Native Americans were malevolent beings that wreaked havoc in the lands and had a specific taste for human flesh. The tradition of the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in Mississippi in their migration from the west. Their tradition states the Nawulo, which was a race of giants, were of wonderful stature. They were said to be cannibals whom the Choctaw killed whenever the opportunity arose. Chief Rolling Thunder of the Comanches, a tribe from the Great Plains, gave the following account of an ancient race of white giants in 1857. Quote, Innumerable moons ago, a race of white men, ten feet high, and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living, here inhabited a large range of country extending from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their populous cities situated in the intervening valleys. They excelled every other nation which was flourished, either before or since, in a manner of cunning handicraft, were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. Compared with them, the pale faces of the present day were pygmies in both art and arms. The chief explained that when this race forgot justice and mercy and became too proud, the great spirit wiped it out, and all that was left of their society were the mounds still visible on the tablelands. Navajo legend describes the Starnake people as, quote, a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes, and had strongholds all through the Americas. They were either extinguished or went back to the heavens, end quote. The Sioux say that the earth was originally peopled by giants who were three times the size of modern man. They too say that the giants denied belief in a creator, and they too say that the giants were wiped out by a great flood. The Hopi tell of giants in the days before the great flood. These stories read nearly identical to the Bible if one allows for local flavor. According to the Hopi, there were giants on the earth in those days, and they were cannibalistic. Many of them had bred with the humans as well as infecting them with their DNA. These offspring were warlike and caused much destruction in the world. A Kachina, Masao, came down from the stars and after entrusting the uncorrupted of the Hopi to the ant people underground, he proceeded to flood the earth and rid it of these giants and monsters. The Hopi later emerged from a cave somewhere in either the Grand Canyon or some say Montezuma's well and began life anew here in the fourth world. Though some tales describe the Chino as a Bigfoot-like creature, the original legend from the Wabanaki people tells that he was once a human, but at some point committed a horrible crime for which the gods cursed him and turned his heart to ice. His frozen spirit was then trapped within the body of a lumbering troll-like monster who devours any human he can get his hands on. The Native American legends of giants are numerable. In order for us to move on to the topic of archaeological findings, here is a quick list of individual tribes and the names of their giants. Beyond the oral traditions of the Native Americans, in the U.S. there is also a litany of archaeological findings and news reports related to giants. 
In the Natural and Aboriginal History of Tennessee by Dr. John Haywood, which was first published in 1823, Haywood provides accounts of giants found in a walled spring with stones that rolled away containing more giants, and four upright standing stones that formed a square box inside of what was the body of another giant. About ten miles from Sparta, a skeleton eight feet tall was found in association with perfectly smooth and round stones. Extremely ancient human remains have been found throughout New York State and New England that date back to at least 9,000 B.C. In a county historical report called A History of Livingston County, New York, published in 1824, reported that in 1811, an Indian mound on Mount Morris, rude metals, pipes, and articles were uncovered in association with the remains of a giant of enormous size. In 1871, a newspaper report from Cayuga, New York, reports that 200 skeletons were removed from a collapsed mound on the banks of the Grand River. These skeletons were said to be in a perfect state of preservation and that the men were of gigantic stature, some of them measuring 9 feet, very few of them being less than 7 feet. Later, the report notes that a lost city was found on a farm in Dunville, New York, in association with two tons of charcoal and various implements indicating the site of an ancient forge. Giant skeletons were also unearthed, the skulls of which are of an enormous size and all manner of shape, some being twice the size of a normal human. In Iowa, the Davenport Stella was found in an Indian mound in 1877, and according to Harvard professor Barry Fell, the Stella contains writing in Egyptian, Iberian, Punic, and Libyan. The Smithsonian, of course, says these are fake. What the Smithsonian cannot say is fake are the over 100 skeletons that institution found in Poplar Bluff, including a chief who measured 7 feet 8 inches tall. In 1883, a team of archaeologists led by Colonel Morris of the Smithsonian was dispatched to West Virginia to the South Charleston Mound to conduct an extensive dig of the 50 mounds they found there and issue a detailed report. The report shows quite clearly that the team uncovered numerous giants, one of which was 7 feet 6 inches tall. Then, at a depth of 9 feet, another giant skeleton was found in the remains of a bark coffin and it was noted in their report that this giant had a skull which was of the compressed or flat head type. In Wheeling, West Virginia, archaeologists found another grouping of giants ranging in height from 6 foot 7 to 7 foot 6 inches, and also displaying unusual skull formations with low foreheads that sloped back gradually. Further down the Cheat River, in 1774, settlers found what they dubbed the Giant Town, with numerous gigantic skeletons, the most significant being that of an eight-foot-tall male. The discoveries across the state of Ohio may be the richest and most unusual in the country. Not only are there numerous finds of giants eight to ten feet tall, but there are also related finds that are equally astonishing. Among the most significant are the Cincinnati tablets inscribed with hieroglyphs and textiles that resemble those from Assyria and Babylon. In a mound in Chillicote, a massive skeleton was found encased in copper armor. Even more astonishing, in an excavation for a house in West Hickory, workers exhumed an enormous iron helmet corroded with rust. In another dig performed in 1889 in southern Ohio, a giant was found buried with the bones of a panther. As reported on the Ohio State University website, several incised and engraved stones with writing and hieroglyphs were discovered along with the magnificent skeleton of an eight-foot-tall queen bedecked in opulent copper jewelry and pearls. In addition, in Bainbridge, Ohio, four bodies were found wrapped in pearl-covered robes, while in a related find in the area, one mound yielded two bushels of pearls containing over 500,000 individual freshwater pearls surrounding two giants wearing copper helmets. In Cartersville, a team from the Smithsonian found a vault with the skeleton of a 7-foot 2-inch person. This skeleton had waist-length jet black hair. Surrounding this giant, the Smithsonian team found more bodies and noted in their report that the bodies had been prepared after the manner of mummies 
and upon the stones that covered the vault were carved inscriptions. All this evidence was shipped to the Smithsonian, and in the report it noted, this is the most interesting collection ever found in America. There have been a number of intriguing finds in Indiana over the years, including the discovery of eight skeletons, one clad in copper armor, buried in a perfect circle. In 1888, the Logan Grays, a military group led by A.M. Jones, were conducting a military exercise on a small island on Eagle Lake near Warsaw, Indiana. Under a flat stone, they discovered a hole that led to the entrance to a secret cave that was 25 feet long, 15 feet wide, and 8 feet deep. Inside was the skeleton of a 6 foot 9 inch giant buried next to a stream that led to what was called a sacred pool. In 1889, near Kiwana, standing stones were found on a mound, and underneath, another giant was unearthed. While in Whitlock, Indiana, another giant was found in association with a group buried in a seated position. One of the largest finds on record was reported in a History of Jennings County, Indiana, published in 1885. It was reported that in 1881, a nine-foot-tall skeleton was unearthed in a local mound, along with the body of a blonde-haired child. And finally, in 1912, an enormous jaw was dug up that had double rows of teeth, a unique characteristic of some giants discovered in other parts of the country as well. The size and scale of the Cahokia Mound complex has been compared in scope and grandeur to the Great Pyramid. Monk's Mound is the largest earthwork in the complex, and it measures 100 feet tall with an original base of 1,000 feet. These even measurements in feet, as well as its numerous astronomical alignments, show great similarities to alignments at Stonehenge and Tiwatiwakan. During excavations south of Monk's Mound, archaeologists also found a series of wooden post holes that they called an American wood hinge which they likened to Stonehenge in England, but a previous unofficial dig at the site uncovered hundreds more skeletons, some giant in nature, which all have disappeared from the historical record. In 1930, Don Dixon discovered what was described at the time as the largest Neolithic burial site in the world, 90 miles south of Peoria at the intersection of the Illinois River. Working with the University of Chicago, Dixon unearthed 248 of the skeletons for an open-air museum. The site was estimated to have over 3,000 burials, many of them of an unusual and gigantic stature. Wisconsin's mound-building culture offers a plethora of giants unearthed in the area. Archaeologists have uncovered evidence of advanced culture and mining activities in the state dating back to at least 9,000 B.C., in one notable case, it was reported that an eight-foot-tall giant was unearthed near Pelican Lake, while in another report from Westport, giant burials were found in association with 10-pound axes and an eight-foot-high wall, which was 15 feet thick and ran across a river embankment for 1,500 feet. It was noted that the wall was made from hard red bricks, some of an immense size. In the woods nearby the shore, a mound was opened which contained a giant buried with several rolls of textiles and a finely finished groove stone axe. Although the Cahokia Mound Complex near St. Louis is considered the major mound site on the Mississippi River, the Poverty Point Earthworks in Louisiana is the most ancient temple site and trading center on the Mississippi River. Although skeletal finds at the Poverty Point Complex are rare, Workmen in Winsboro, Louisiana, engaged in a drainage project, found the remains of a race of giants 12 feet in height. The workers noted that the skulls are in a perfect state of preservation, and some of the jawbones are large enough to surround a baby's body. In a related find in Alabama, 400 skeletons were unearthed in Moundville, Alabama, by the Alabama Museum of Natural History, who estimated that some of the skeletons dated to 3000 B.C., with the largest specimen measuring 7 feet 6 inches tall. In 1931, the San Antonio Press announced that a federal WPA archaeological team digging in association with the University of Texas discovered what at the time was called the largest human skull found in the world in Victoria County, Texas. Dubbed the giant on the beach, photographs reveal that this skull was twice the size of the skull of a normal man. 
These finds were held at the University of Texas, where the Smithsonian examined them and related discoveries, and in a joint press release it was said that these finds in Texas are beginning to give weight to the theory that man lived in Texas 40 to 45,000 years ago. The western desert regions of the U.S., including California, Nevada, New Mexico, and Arizona, had high culture as early as 8,000 B.C. At that time, the region was covered by a freshwater lake called Lake Lohontan, which was as large as the biggest of the Great Lakes and situated at a height of 5,000 feet. It is in this region in the state of Nevada that we find Lovelock Cave. At one time, the Lovelock Cave was known as Horseshoe Cave because of its U-shaped interior. The cavern, located about 20 miles south of modern-day Lovelock, Nevada, is approximately 40 feet deep and 60 feet wide. Geologists have determined the cavern was formed by the lake's currents and wave action. According to Paiute oral history, the Saitika are a legendary tribe of giants, the remains of which were found in 1911 by guano miners in Nevada's Lovelock Cave. The Paiute told early white settlers about their ancestors' battles with a ferocious race of white, red-haired giants who were already living in the area. The red-haired giants were said to be as tall as 12 feet and were a vicious, unapproachable people that killed and ate captured Paiutes as food. The Paiutes told the early settlers that after many years of warfare, all the tribes in the area finally joined together to rid themselves of the giants. One day, as they chased down the few remaining giants, their enemies took refuge in a cave. The tribal warriors demanded their enemy come out and fight, but the giants steadfastly refused to leave their sanctuary. Frustrated at not defeating their enemy with honor, the tribal chiefs had warriors fill the entrance to the cavern with brush and then set it on fire in a bid to force the giants out of the cave. The few that did emerge were instantly slain with volleys of arrows. The giants that remained inside the cavern were asphyxiated. Thousands of years later, as a mining operation progressed in 1911, skeletons and fossils were found. The guano was mined for almost 13 years before archaeologists were notified about the findings. Unfortunately, by then many of the artifacts had been accidentally destroyed or simply discarded. Nevertheless, what the scientific researchers did recover was staggering. Over 20,000 artifacts were unearthed, including the mummified remains of two red-haired giants. One, a female, six and a half feet tall, and the other male, over eight feet tall. The 1947 edition of the Nevada News relates how Dr. F. Bruce Russell, following up on reports that the Smithsonian had hidden evidence of giants found in Death Valley, eventually uncovered a complex of 32 caves in a 180-square-mile radius around the California-Nevada border. Inside, he reported finding the skeletons of eight- to nine-foot giants dressed in animal skins. Inside the complex of caves, Russell also reported finding hieroglyphs, extensive weapons, and religious artifacts. In 1911, it was reported that William Altman, assistant curator of the Golden Gate Memorial Museum, found skeletons, pottery, and artifacts in Port Costa, including the skeleton of a giant more than seven feet tall. Later the same year, Altman reported finding more giants on an island in the Santa Barbara Channel, including one skeleton that measured seven feet four inches tall. In 1934, the Bakersfield Californian reported that the Smithsonian, under the direction of Dr. W.T. Strong and W.M. Walker, removed 564 skeletons and 4,000 artifacts from a series of mound sites near Taft, California. According to the article, the Smithsonian commissioned Pavi L. Stanley of Bakersfield to make a topographical site of the finds which was to be filed with the collection at the Smithsonian. But the most amazing discoveries in California were eventually found on Catalina Island. In the 1920s, the island of Catalina was owned by the Wrigley Chewing Gum family, who hired Professor Ralph Glidden to conduct a series of digs on the island under the direction of the Catalina Museum. 
What they found made headlines around the world, only to be written out of the history books less than ten years later. In short, Glidden and his team exhumed the remains of 3,781 skeletons of a race of blonde-haired giants. The tallest was believed to be a king who measured 9 feet 2 inches tall, and the average height of the skeletons was reported to be around 7 feet. In addition, the team found the remains of a megalithic Stonehenge-era temple. Later, radiocarbon dating revealed that some of the skeletons unearthed were 7,000 years old. For over 50 years, the proofs pertaining to these discoveries were vigorously denied by the University of California and the Smithsonian. But in 2011, it was finally admitted that the evidence for these finds had been locked away from the public in the restricted access evidence rooms of the Smithsonian, along with detailed field reports and hundreds of photos. Archaeological evidence of giants is still a subject of spirited debate among scientists, theologians, and others. As we have seen, countless newspaper articles in the 1800s and early 1900s tell of human skeletons being found throughout the world, but especially in North America. And curiously, among many of those reports is the recurring claim that the giant skeletons were sent to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. and mysteriously disappeared. In Atlanta, Georgia, the banner on May 6, 1884, told of Smithsonian scientists finding giant skeletons in an Indian burial mound. Quote, the stones were removed when, in a kind of vault beneath them, the skeleton of a giant who measured 7 feet 2 inches was found. End quote. The article further noted all the relics were carefully packed and sent to the Smithsonian Institution and are said to be the most interesting collection ever found in America. The New York Times on March 17, 1924, published a story from Lewiston, quote, a huge skeleton believed to be that of a prehistoric human being has been discovered in Salmon River County by two members of the State Highway Department who brought their find to the city. Belief that the person was of a herbivorous race was expressed owing to the peculiar formation of the jaws and teeth. Both the upper and lower jaws each had only ten teeth, all of which were intact. End quote. Physicians said the skeleton was a woman more than eight feet tall, and the bones were also supposedly sent to the Smithsonian for study. Though there are plenty of newspaper reports of finding giant human skeletons, Time magazine wrote in 1994 that, quote, yet despite more than a century of digging, the fossil record remains maddeningly sparse. With so few clues, even a single bone that doesn't fit into the picture can upset everything. Virtually every major discovery has put deep cracks in the conventional wisdom and forced scientists to concoct new theories amid furious debate, end quote. A common claim among many of the stories is that the artifacts were shipped off to the Smithsonian, sometimes accused of destroying them. Of course, the Smithsonian denies all of this, and scholars seem to be divided on the issue. Why would the Smithsonian destroy such spectacular artifacts if they did in fact receive them? And why aren't they on display? Where are they? Why doesn't the Smithsonian want to talk about it? Could the Smithsonian have reclassified donated bones as animal fossils? The answers to those questions pits Darwinian evolutionists against creationists and provides a hot topic for conspiracy theorists, while moviegoers will remember the final scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark when the Ark of the Covenant disappears into a mammoth Smithsonian storage facility never to be seen again. One Nevada report said, quote, The Smithsonian Institute are very keen to hide many discoveries as it would mean all the books would have to be rewritten and they are very much aware of this. It would also mean academia had it wrong, and they refused to simply acknowledge that the nature of archaeology is such 
that as we make new discoveries, we need to update with reference to new findings, end quote. Perhaps Dr. Greg Little, another noted researcher and author on the subject, said it best. He criticizes the Smithsonian's stance on the issue of giants, writing in 2014 in AP Magazine, quote, I don't see the Smithsonian as being in a conspiracy in the true definition of the word. I see it as a sort of stupidity in the sense that they have ignored an aspect of their own findings that the public sees as intriguing. Instead of engaging the public, they alienate it. I also see that American archaeology resents all outsiders, resists all beliefs that go against their beliefs, and they utilize skeptics as a sort of police force to silence critics and others. From a psychological standpoint, they are doing battle with their own shadow. It is a battle that can't be won. End quote.